inside and cry. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. There's no other way for these kind of places. Heartbreaking. I hope that when kids see this, my kids as well, If this could do this to me, if this could do this to me, it's got to do something to you inside. It's all Bit like this is a bit like Stanford Market Centre, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. That is beautiful. I bet it's a lovely city there too, even though it's having a meal. Couple of glasses of wine. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Beautiful little villages. Should have got the 600 pound sat now. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, that's nice. Did you see that house on the right then? I uh, had bras hanging all the way across it. Does that uh, uh, does that symbolise it's a knocking shop? Do you know, in, pla in places in America. People had to pay a fortune to go for laughing therapy. Yeah. yeah. And you're getting and you guys are getting it for free. <laughs> Just think what I'd give you if you were paying for it. <laughs> yeah. So bear, if you look over your right shoulder now. 
where them road signs are, that field was really crushed. Where the what are? Where the windmills are? Yeah, just further back, further bit further back, where there's that tree on its own. That's where the plane went down. Right, yeah. Just basically, it was just in the middle of, middle of those fields over there. Yeah. But they, they have no idea why the plane come down. Right. They've got no, there's no recorded evidence. There's no evidence of it being shot down. And there's no evidence of them calling in an emergency. Right. I say we're not too far from the sea now, boys. Yeah, we're up by Dieppe. The sea is just over to your right hand side, Dieppe. Churches over here. If you keep looking boys, you might be able to see the sea in a bit. We might, you'll be able to see the sea. We're actually on the coastline now. Over to Dieppe. How did you manage to find the crash site then? Well, well I found the, that document where it listed all of the... the aeroplane numbers. Yeah. And then you can track uh, from that where the aeroplanes were found, recovered. Right. And it actually gives you the what the, the geolocations of where they are. Was it like that term that what it three words up? You give yeah. the exact location well, type thing. You, you just type the location into Google and it'll just it'll show you on the spot. Right. All it just showed you was it was that field, it didn't say where in that field. Oh right, yeah. It wasn't well, it wasn't that accurate. The Germans used to make sure that buried the dead so they could claim the victory and report how many soldiers they've killed right yeah it was kind of i suppose a bit of both was it? it was a bit of respect that a soldier would bury a dead soldier but also it was a victory claim yeah there was a reason for doing it yeah so, so far we've done about just over 100 miles what we've done Yesterday we headed south, we've now headed north, west, over to Dieppe. We're going to see Bear's grave, his family grave, and then from there we've got about another 120 miles to head south to the hotel. So we're just approaching the cemetery for Bear's relative. It's just down here on the left hand side. That they thought that it was going to be a bigger place than this. Well, they ain't very big. These are all uh, cemeteries, and then I'm just there's just hundreds and hundreds of them. I <laughs> say, so when you think of something like Normandy, where they have a massive one there, this is. So here we go, 
She's bare cemetery. Canadian War Cemetery. Let's go and have a look. So we've made it to Bear's family grave, just south of Dieppe. So this is the the war cemetery. We know his grave is H13. I'm looking for George Brothwell. A lot of Canadian, a lot of Canadian soldiers here. We're looking at H13. G H. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So is it from? No. So is it thirteen from that end? George Brotherwell. There we go. Yeah. So there he is. That's Bear's relative there. George Brotherwell. This is the story of Bear's relative, George William Brothwell. On January the 14th and 15th, 1943, there was a campaign of bombing a submarine base in Lorient, laying mines and dropping leaflets. George's mission was a part of dropping the leaflets. There were 15 planes engaged in the mission of dropping the leaflets. One of the planes had to turn back due to a technical fault. And George's plane, the Wellington Mark III serial number DF614, did not return from the mission. There is no evidence to date to indicate the cause of the loss of the missing plane. There is no signs of enemy engagement, no signs of an SOS distress call, and no signs of artillery fire from the ground. George was a member of the 29th OTU, the Operational Training Unit, and their plane took off from an RAF base in Woolfox Lodge. This is the police report, which came in on January the 16th, 1943. The report was by Captain Lacko, who was the commander of the Gendarmerie. 
on the night of January the 15th, 1943, at 1.30am, an English bomber fell on the territory of the commune of saint remy Boscricourt, on the edge of CGC number 78. The device exploded and the debris scattered over a radius of 500 metres. Three airmen who occupied the aircraft are completely torn to pieces. A dozen unexploded bombs lie on the ground within a radius of 100 metres from the point where the aircraft fell. Bundles of leaflets are near the drop point. The guard of the apparatus is insured by the German troops. The unit's mission was a night mission which was dropping leaflets over Nantes area of France. The aircraft did not return and was initially reported as missing. It was later confirmed that the plane crashed on January the 15th, 1943. Here we have D Flight Number 2 Squadron 3, the ITW initial training wing from October 1941. Sergeant George Brothwell is on the bottom row, fifth from the right. This is the letter that was sent from the Air Ministry to the family and it reads I am directed to inform you that the confirmation of death of your brother Sergeant G.W. Brodwell has now been received from an official German source. Particulars regarding his place of burial have not been furnished but you will be notified should they come to hand at a later date. Action has accordingly been taken to presume for official purposes that your brother lost his life on the 15th of January 1943. I am to express the sympathy of the department with you in your great loss. I am, sir, your obedient servant. This is the cross that was laid when George was buried, and you will notice it states the 20th OTU, where in fact he was in the 29th squadron of the OTU, that was later rectified on his war stone. The day after the crash, a Mr. Gilbert Letelier had been at the spot and he had the excellent idea to recover the compass and other items from the wreckage. George was the navigator on the Wellington Mark III and this is actually the compass what was recovered. It still got his settings on, which would have been the course they were on that night. There was quite a few other items recovered from the wreckage, different parts of metal from the different parts of the plane. There were also buttons found from their uniforms and also we have the documents recording the death of George. We later found out that George is remembered on the cenotaph at Rotherham, so Piggy and Bear went out there to find his name on the plaque. Yeah. Great granddad and Albie's wife's great granddad, wasn't it? Whereas George, I didn't know him. Yeah. I just, I just know of him. And I only know of him because of, well, but, um, cousin Keith and his, mm -hmm. and his daughter told us. And like I said, we're just in the crash site, what, 20, yeah. 30 miles away. And here we are. And just to think, you know, you think how far that is we've come from the crash site to here. And they brought them by horse and cart. Yeah. But they even, you look around here, and there's so many that just say, I mean, a soldier. So, yeah, and so, unnamed. So unnamed. Yeah. Where is he, mate? Is this second one? Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Really the same. Yeah. The very first person that's ever come to say, do you know what? Thanks for what you did for mm. us. Thanks for what you gave. I mean, looking at that now, Bear, you think he's been there 80 years and his family has finally come to him. Yeah. How long has he been waiting? His family has come 80 How years. How long has he been waiting? 80 years. To come and say, but this doesn't look these don't look like you're 80 years old. Yeah. For the regiment he was in, they have got their own badge. Right. Yeah, I've got the picture of it. I've got a picture of their badge. Because I think what happened was his, his regiment didn't do this mission. Only some of them out of that regiment. Right. There, was a, there was a mix. Well, there's a pilot, there's the navigator, there's the bomber. You're going to go drop leaflets. It wasn't just his entire regiment was doing it. Yeah. I think that's why they don't get the regiment badge. But he has, yeah, but he has got his own regiment badge. Of his there badge. I said the same as yours and the same as Bear's. Yeah. Today has probably been the first time their bloodline has come, come to their to grave. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be hundreds of these kind of places scattered throughout France, scattered throughout the world. One man's greed or one country's greed. There's just no point to none of it. Just sat here and spoke to the people died as if they were still here beautiful cemeteries it's a living testament to these soldiers that it is it's beautiful it does mean Albie. so much <laughs> found two families in one day it's been awesome like you said though but like you say this could be yeah. the first time any bloodlines come yeah. to see them in all these years 80 right? years that we've brought the blood yeah and they the brought respect, the families to them. And the respect they deserve, you know. It's just awesome, isn't it? And it's so nice. It is really nice. We're going to get the poppy crossed. Yeah. Flash. Where's Flash? There he is, bless him. I don't think he kind of knows... I don't think he knows what to do or what to feel. I think he's got a mix of emotions. He said he didn't know this family member, but it is his bloodline. And as we've said, he's been there 80 years and bare for all we know, and probably for the future. He's the only bloodline from his family which came to him. He's been here 80 years in Dieppe. But we brought the family to him, we did it. That's what brothers do. That's what brothers do. Sleep tight, boys. Sleep tight. <laughs>